Guten Abend miteinander. Welcome to the Pillow Song Podcast. We're your hosts, Famous October. I am Sarah Bowman. Und mein Name ist René Burrell. Normalerweise sind wir am Mittwoch immer im Käslager in Stanz, anlässlich unserer Konzertreihe Mittwochmusik. Under normal circumstances, we present concerts every Wednesday at the Käslager Music Venue in Stanz, Switzerland. Local pasta creators Pastorazzi would be serving you a delicious meal right now, along with all the performing musicians, staff and volunteers. Die Konzertübung stand für einen gesunden und generationenübergreifenden Austausch unter allen Beteiligten und die Musik ist dabei für alle den gemeinsamen Nenner. Music, community and shared experiences are as important to the health of the soul as things like meditation, yoga and even sports, so why not make it a routine? That's why we started Mittwochmusik at the Gaslager and that's why we provide the same content online on Wednesdays. This is the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Reto Burrell and Wendy McNeil. So schön sind wir da. 2020 May this be the year when we realize the interconnectedness of all things, where we see past the crazy and into the true, where we truly treasure the tiny things. These are the words of our guest tonight, Wendy McNeil. I found this quote on her website from January 19th of this year. For me, reflecting on New Year's resolutions in 2020 It's kind of like finding my old lesson plans for a career I had, and a job I quit, in a town I mislaid, in a country I relinquished, in a shell I shed and left behind. I don't know how Wendy feels when she hears her own words tonight. I'll have the opportunity to ask her in a little while. But I wonder, too, have any of our listeners tonight reflected on those New Year's resolutions for 2020? It seems like a novel idea to go back and examine our intentions from the start of this historic year, and I imagine we might gasp at the ironies contained there, or possibly find ourselves refreshingly on track. I mean, we still have over seven months to go. I found my resolutions after some digging around, and here they are, or were. My greatest wish this year is to be happy in this house because it is enough for us, because we feel free here, because our children are safe, and because we are part of a strong, supportive, and loving community. I know that these surroundings will give me the strength I need to make something meaningful with my music. Okay, some things to gasp at there. I mean, I wasn't predicting that being happy in this house would mean spending this much time in it. And I certainly didn't expect to feel longing with any mention of being part of a strong and loving community. But now, when I consider Wendy's quote, I find that despite the intense degree of challenge that the tests of 2020 have laid out for us, lots of folks are still focused on those very basic goals. More acutely than ever, see past the crazy and into the true. I feel we're made to work harder than ever these days. It all brings forth questions I used to find myself pondering in the context of my first ever exposure to weed or LSD. Like, yeah, like, did the Amish have it right all along? Is technology totally going too far? When did we become so different from animals anyway? What justifies a good day, dude, or a good year? Do I really need to be productive? How much do I really need to know? And I remember my dad saying such hopelessly unhelpful things to us as kids, such as, All I know is that I don't know. Far out, Dad. But what was pre-teenaged me supposed to do with that? I am programmed, am I not, with a mind that yearns for knowledge, and you're telling me one never claims it. Like, never. And in Reto's song, Time Can Heal, that famous October is covering tonight, he writes, truth may hurt sometimes. Well, I guess he's right. Doesn't he know? Aren't we also working hard to avoid some of the truths that make us uncomfortable, grasping at straws that promise we can relax and finally be free from our diligent concern for others? Recently, 
Pressed to relieve the angst and confusion brought forth by this pandemic, this crisis, I came up with a personal solution to the problem of needing to know. Yeah, I did. And so far, it's this. I need to know just enough to avoid harming the earth, harming myself, harming others, each day that I live. And know just enough to interpret my experiences so I can expel the bad stuff, gravitate towards the good stuff, and express what love and joy I've found in order to pass it on. So, here we are. With a podcast that brings me so much joy as it gives me a place to transmit the good stuff that I find in music and in talking to those who love making it and to you who enjoy hearing it. Did you know that listening to music is an activity that engages the entire brain? Are you ready to be engaged? Here is Time Can Heal by Reto Burrell, performed by Famous October. It's Wednesday, and this is the Pillow Song Podcast. Our first featured artist tonight is Reto Burrell. Yeah, you notice we all share a same last name. That's not by accident. He's my brother-in-law. Reto was born an ambiguous number of years ago in Lucerne, Switzerland, where he lived as an infant with his single mother. They then moved with his stepfather to Australia, but eventually the family settled in Stanstad, where Reto's two younger brothers, René and Philip, were born. His parents encouraged music in the household, but were not musicians themselves. Mysteriously, all three boys have pursued music very seriously in their adult lives. 
Reto discovered his two half-brothers and half-sister later in life and traveled to Denver, Colorado to meet the part of his family with Native American blood. He's developed a lasting relationship with his half-brothers. Perhaps it's his blood or his stepfather's native British tongue that led him to write songs primarily in English. Reto started playing guitar at an early age and has gone through many musical phases, metal, hardcore, grunge, pop, alt-rock, indie rock, and new country. He's released 11 albums since his start in 1997, and we anticipate the release of his upcoming EP with Swiss singer Josie. We will be premiering a song from that upcoming album just for you, our listeners, just tonight, so stay tuned. That's coming up. Reto is also an award-winning producer, writing and producing music for a wide range of Swiss acts. It's possible that Reto finds inspiration from his work at the Not Schlafstelle in Luzern, which is a homeless shelter. Perhaps he's provided inspiration to others beyond his music, with his vegan lifestyle, his work with the homeless, and his career longevity. You're listening to the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Reto Burrell and Wendy McNeil. Here is Where is Robin Hood, performed and recorded for tonight's podcast at his home studio, which used to be our home studio. This is Reto Burrell. Whatever happens to this place, there's a lifetime warranty And a bonus if you pay their fees They say like what mama told me when I was just a kid Standing barefoot in deep shit Walls come tumbling, is this it? But I won't wait Back for good solutions paid with bits and coins as if it ever could. Where is Robin Hood? Another hundred years from now, we all be gone by then. So I worry. Amen. Living individually, but posing just the same in the game way on Eagle Parade. Do lay against your own shade. But I won't wait the watches keep on striking back for good. Solutions paid with bits and coins as if it ever could. Where is Robin Hood? Tell me, where is Robin Hood?
You just heard Where is Robin Hood by Reto Burrell, which he recorded especially for this podcast. And it's it brings me a smile to my face to hear that this as I know exactly what it looks like where he recorded this song because Soreto and his girlfriend took over our old apartment which is on the top floor of a running school. And yes, school is back in session here in Switzerland. This is the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. This and all of your our pre- previous pro um Previous podcasts are archived at PillowSong.com. Please visit our website and help us keep programming like this free and available. And now I have my brother, Reto Burrell, on the phone. Reto, schön dürfen mit dir heute telefonieren. Sali. Sali, Reto, schön mit dir telefonieren. Ich habe noch nie Brüder, ja, nicht durch Interview. Nein, es ist wirklich, it's a first. <lacht> Definitely. <lacht> ja, und heute hättest du im Käslager gespielt. Ähm, umso dankbar sind wir, dass du da die Aufnahme extra hast können für uns machen ähm, Und ja, du bist, mein, du bist mein älterer Bruder und seit ich kann denken, machst du Musik. Und das sehr fleissig. Mittlerweile mit einem riesigen Songkatalog. Und ja. äh, wie viele Songs sind es? Ich kann nicht sagen, Hunderte. <lacht> Aber schon, es ist schon in den Hunderten oben. Und so der... viel, dass es schon wieder fast peinlich wird. <lacht> <lacht> Dabei bist du dir aber immer selber treu geblieben, auch wenn du vielleicht zwischendurch ein bisschen angegeckt bist. Und im Englischen sagen wir so schön den Ausdruck «You stay true to yourself». And this is something you have done again and again throughout your career. So now my question to you. Can you think of some judgments or criticism that you've had to dismiss or um, overcome in order to maintain your own sense of identity? No, not really. Actually, um, I, I think the main, the main, the main gain I always had were like these crit- critics I put into myself. You know, like asking myself, why am I doing it? Why should I do it? And most of the good songs came out of moods that were like, no, I'm not gonna play the guitar anymore, and I wanted to quit several times. <laughs> oh <laughs> like wow! All the, all the critics and and all, all the all the negativity just keep me going on just keep me moving so then of course uh, when when i turned 40 uh, that's like seven years ago i asked myself hmm i need a i need a different kind of gain and not only the negativity and and the the running away from stuff that made me mm-hmm. write songs so i'm still in the learning process to to write songs and music feeling happy yeah and uh yes i i I think i think it works very well (laughs) well it sounds great and um yeah still writing but it was i had to switch the the identity of writing songs for myself yeah 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 i mean there is the saying that anger is a good motivator (laughs) <laughs> something like that mm-hmm. but um, I think it's definitely good especially in these times to actually be more on the positive end because this world needs positive energy and absolutely the uh, combination is good you know when you can have when you're angry about something angry about the decisions of the government or of people not not you know not listen to that whatever whatever side you're on I think the combination has to work in a song. That's yeah. Why I was like, I like the white and the black in the same song. <laughs> okay, yeah. And um, and you're also doing really good work as a side job, actually. You work in a homeless shelter in Luzern. As a neighbor job for you, you are in the Notschlafstelle in Luzern. And mm-hmm. these days, the stress of the current situation with the pandemic has put strain on homeless homeless shelters around the world. For example, I've read that in San Francisco, homeless shelters have stopped admitting new people due to the fear of COVID-19 outbreak among residents. What what are your concerns regarding how the homeless are affected here in Switzerland and uh, and also elsewhere during the, this pandemic? Well, I can just talk um, about Lucerne and uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it got quiet now the last couple of days. But in the beginning, when the virus started, it was very intense because we only could take um, half of the people in. And everybody that comes has to, we have to measure them fever. And if they have a high fever of uh, 38 degrees, we have to put them somewhere else. It never happened, though. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise, you know, it's it's a it's a long, a long check that they have to go through. And you act- we can take him in. And you had to turn away people then because you couldn't uh, you couldn't take as many people as normally. No, we were happily that we didn't have to um, um, turn turn off people. I'm glad to hear that. But actually. Except for the first night where we should have, we didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. First night where they say like just you know, not as much as you used to have in, but then we had a lot of people who, who had to stay because uh, they had to get out of the country as well. So we just say like let's do tomorrow, but it was intense night. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the main situation is like a lot of lot of um, beggars can't beg anymore because there's not enough people on the road. Oh yeah. Yeah. And of course, because there's not a lot of people and, and all the, the borders are closed, the drug situation is also a big influence on the scene because all the drugs got way more expensive in the streets and up till 10 times as much. So people got very aggressive and, and, and they, they, they couldn't get their drugs. And um, that's what we felt in the first couple of weeks. Uh-huh. That's pretty intense. Yeah, that's yeah. So now, as an insider as you are, <laughs> do you have advice to our listeners? So let us to let us know how we can help. Well, if somebody asks you for money, just give. You don't have to give much, but just give. You know, instead of just giving a person like five Swiss francs, give them one franc but give it to five people because there's a lot of people on the street that are asking now for money for help and they really need it because sometimes i'm also a little torn it's like oh is it not the right thing to actually give money should i just make sure they get a sandwich or something that i have in my pocket or so you you would advise yes it's okay to give money yes and i mean they may say they need it for the night shelter but I would say like only about 10 or 20 percent needed for the night shelter. They need mm-hmm. for drugs. You know, it's, it's, it's obvious. But of course, they have to pay more now for the drugs. So, so they need more money. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's their life. And you, you can't just look away. Yeah, not to look away. That's important. Well, thank you, Reto. <laughs> thank you very um, much. Yeah, thank you dass du das mit uns da gemacht hast. Now we are going to hear two more songs by you. And one cool. is even going to be a world premiere, as you told me. Can you tell us a yes. little bit about that or this? Yes. Uh, well, a um, couple of weeks ago, we released a single, um, a duet song, a nice, nice love song I wrote for my partner because oh. she wrote me a beautiful love letter. And I was just like, ah, oh, I need to write back, but I'm not the best letter writer so i just put it in a song wow that's amazing <laughs> and of course and of course i i just heard a second voice in that track so i asked a good friend of, of my drummer she already joined us on stage and she's an amazing voice and it fits well to mine so we recorded that song and it was that much fun and, and it got played on the radio station a lot actually still is and um we just thought, like, let's let's record a couple of more songs and put out an EP. So that's what we did. We just uh, recorded another three songs acoustic. It's just the two voices and one guitar. And it's going to be out on June 5th. And uh, this song we're going to hear now is very new. It's called Riding a Cannonball. Great. Thank you so much, Reto. And um, ja, bis hoffentlich bald wieder einmal, gell? <laughs> yeah, thanks have, for having me. Yeah, uh, have thank it you so for this beautiful version of uh, Time Can Heal. Oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, re- we really had a lot of fun it with it. It was our pleasure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, you are listening to the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. I am your host, Rene Burrell of Famous October. You can support Reto and his music at www.retoburrell.com. 
Retropurell.ch, R-E-T-O-P-U-R-R-E-L-L.ch. And we're going to drop it into the chat. And here is a home recording first of My Best Friend by Reto Burrell, followed by the world premiere of the song Cannonball, a duet by Reto and Shosi. Drinking, slowly sinking with regret Clinging to the world I knew and can't forget It's so strange the way things change The way things move so fast And once they're in the past You can't bring them back if I could only be my best friend, then I could help myself. If I could only be my best friend, I need no one else. It would set me free, and happiness would be forever. Cause I know me, I could show me right from wrong and By tomorrow, all this sorrow would be gone If I was here to share my beer Oh, I'd pay any price But life's a loaded dice and you don't win twice If I could only be my best friend and lend a helping hand If I could only be my best friend I'd understand It would set me free and happiness would be forever Sitting on the missile, 
know we'll have it made. Ooh. And we may not have a nickel, but a debt's been paid. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. We can fly, raise into war tomorrow. Just you and I. the sky, leave all the past behind, ride in a cannonball, ride in a cannonball. Just last week, Spencer Bocart Lindell of the New York Times wrote an opinion piece about food delivery in the pandemic. Ashiko Raman, a food delivery worker in New York City, told co workers, So many people are scared, and I am too, but I need the money, as he cycled over the Williamsburg Bridge from Manhattan into Brooklyn for the third time in one day, carting five cases of beer. New York has suffered nearly 16,000 deaths and currently has 194,000 confirmed cases. Well, well, that's quite an image. In New York, fährt ein Food Delivery Arbeiter mit fünf Kisten Bier auf dem Velo über die Brooklyn Bridge und das während der Pandemie. Besorgt um seine eigene Gesundheit. Well, next we will have Benito from Pastorazzi on the phone, who has also been delivering food during the lockdown here in Switzerland, mit sogenannten Überlebenspaketli inklusive WC-Papier. But this is something Pastorazzi did only during the lockdown. They, they are a team of um, young, dedicated workers with a true sense of solidarity. They make their own pasta and manage their own restaurants. Normally, they serve food to all the musicians, helpers and guests every Wednesday at the Gräslager in Stanz during our Mittwoch music concert series. Today is Wednesday and we are not at the Gräslager. Aber dafür haben wir den Benito am Telefon. Ciao, Benito! Salut René, guten Abend René und Sarah. Hi, hi. Wie geht's dir? Live, li live from the Pastrati restaurant. Oh, cool. Live from our living room. <laughs> <laughs> Wie geht es dir? Gut, gut so weit. Bei uns gehört langsam wieder ein bisschen Normalität zurück. Halt noch ein bisschen mit Distanz, mehr Distanz wie das ist. Wir haben es sehr gern sehr nahe mit allen, aber es ähm, immer mehr wieder ein Normalität. Was a little bit more distance to the normal, but normal normal life is returning, Benito says. <laughs> yeah, well, I in particular miss your gluten-free cooking. <laughs> <laughs> You've been bringing food to people during the lockdown, and just like those in New York City, Food delivery is making history because of its essential workers. How do you feel about your role in this historic time, and what are the best ways to protect workers like you when we collect our food? Um, I'm very happy and thankful for, um, for everybody coming to this, our restaurants. Um, also, us have a, we have to respect a little more of distance. We try to show but we try to show the same openness and try to try to the customers. Yeah, I feel like um, yeah, people don't really know how to interact right now. It's it's almost as if we forget to smile, you know, because we're protecting yeah. each other. So it's nice to hear you're bringing that, you're remembering that to do that. Do you feel like people are a little bit more cheerful than they've been in the past weeks? Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, that that I think so. Yeah, but but um, 
Ja, ist uh, it was a a a good experience to uh, to 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 see the the people stay together. Mm-hmm. And then um yeah. Yeah. And um, ja, also ja. mir ist es natürlich immer eine Freude, deine positive Art zu hören. Und also die normalerweise im Käselager habe ich die. Und äh, immer am Mittwoch. Und jetzt ist es schön, da, dich am Telefon zu haben. Du hast am Anfang gerade auch noch gesagt, eben mit der Stimmung, ähm, du probierst jetzt einfach vor allem auch die, die Kunden mit, mit positiven ähm, Energie auch ein bisschen zu überschütten. Kann man das so sagen? Ja. Genau, better, better in German. <laughs> 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 I, I speak in German when, uh, yeah. when I translate to English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, ja, oh, wir haben Ende versucht, ein bisschen die Party zu nehmen, von, um, von, von, von Normalität vorzuleben, auch ein bisschen den gesunden Menschenverstand um, versucht, um, bei den Leuten äh, zu wecken, dass sie ihre eigenen Risiken versuchen, auch selber ein bisschen abzuschätzen und ähm, ein bisschen zu spüren, was ist wirklich meine Angst und wie, wie wirkt das auf mich und was ist vielleicht auch ein bisschen ähm, ähm, für mich jetzt nicht gerade besonders gefährdend und ich setze vielleicht eher aus Respekt vor anderen machen, wo halt wirklich das Risiko grösser ist in dieser Situation oder war. Yeah, so they're really trying to also in, encourage people to also think for themselves um, what is it exactly that scares them and what can they do to diminish those fears and also to that those people are aware of what actions that they are making can be um, troublesome for other people so awareness is something very important mm-hmm. but also common sense mm-hmm. ja ich denke es ist jetzt so eine gradwanderung it's a balance act that everybody has to kind of do right now aber ich freue mich besonders wieder wenn wir natürlich könnt wieder zusammen im käslager sein und wir die feine Pasta für euch im Käslager könnt essen können. Obwohl, eben, du hast gesagt, wir sollen jetzt schon vorbeikommen. Ihr habt Filialen in Stanz, in Luzern, in Sarne. Wo sind ihr sonst noch? Ähm, ja, das ist ja. Super. Momentan sind wir natürlich viel immer in der Open Air. Und oh, die und fallen weg, jetzt auch weg. Die <lacht> fallen aus. Musiktag, ja. die schönen Stanz, Musiktag, wo jetzt leider mit sind B-Sides und natürlich ganz viele andere schöne, kleine, lokale Openairs, die jetzt ausfallen leider den Sommer. Aber es ist natürlich schön, wenn ähm, gewisse so etwas möchten wie, wie ihr jetzt mit dem Podcast. Oh, thank das ist eine you. mega tolle Sache. Das ist ja auch eine gute Möglichkeit, dass man nicht ganz muss auf Kultur verzichten muss und gute Musik in dieser Zeit oder gute Live-Musik. Well, we wished we could um, provide everybody with a pasta meal before mm-hmm. listening to our podcast. But, um, hey, maybe next time. Uh, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> ja, danke vielmals, Benito, für, für, fürs Zulassen und fürs, um, für, ja, für mit uns zu reden. Danke euch. Danke, und Benito. Bis bald wieder live. Ja, unbedingt. Angesicht zu Angesicht. <laughs> Genau. Halt immer noch mit ein bisschen Distanz. Wir werden es sehen und vielleicht bald auch wieder ganz normal. Ja, ich freue mich dann um die Umarmung, wenn wir wieder mal das. <lacht> <lacht> also. Tschüss, Ferito. Danke Tschüss, dir. Benito. Tschüss miteinander. Ciao, ciao. Tschüss. This is the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. This and all of our previous podcasts are archived at Pillowsong.com. Please visit our website, Pillowsong.com, and help us to keep programming like this free and available. Rene and I had the pleasure of covering a fascinating song by Wendy McNeil, where the narrator is the witness of a heinous crime, where an innocent instrument maker is killed. 
But the narrator couldn't do a thing about it, because they are, in fact, an accordion. Wendy, this is a monster of a song. I hope you like what we came up with. This is Famous October performing In Boca a Lupo by Wendy McNeil.
That was us, Famous October, performing in Boca Alupo by Wendy McNeil. Five years ago, Wendy McNeil performed at our Pillow Song Loft after the highest recommendation of our friend Marcel Beery from the B-Sides Festival and my brother Philip. Yes, I have two brothers. Marcel told us her music is so great and she's such a wonderful person, you just have to book her. And Philip, he was blown away by her performance at the Südpol in Lucerne when he was opening for her with, um, with his band uh, Marigold and he was comparing her to PJ Harvey. So thankfully we booked Wendy McNeil and it was all true. Wendy is genuinely wonderful and an amazing performer and a magical storyteller. Later we also played a concert together with Wendy at the Klein Theater in Lucerne, where we were joined by Pink Spider and Trummer for a special pillow song night. I'd like to give you now a bit more background about Wendy McNeil, especially for the listeners who don't know her yet. And I couldn't describe it better than her existing bio already does, so here we go. Or it originated Originally from the prairies of Canada, Wendy's songs retain her love of wide open space and the longing that such big skies can generate. She is a fan of underdogs, strange cats and brave hearts. These characters are often the centerpieces of her songs which she creates using looped vocals, accordion and guitar. She has been described as an artist that creates deep twisted tales and wise moving music. She has released seven studio albums, contributed her music to indie film, dance, theater productions. She's been showcased on numerous compilation CDs and toured in North America, Europe, Brazil and Japan. File under Folk Noir. You are listening to the Pillow Song Podcast. This is an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. We are your hosts, René Burrell and Sarah Bowman of Famous October. Sarah will be talking with Wendy shortly. Here is Such a Common Bird by Wendy McNeil, which she recorded at home as one as a one channel, one take recording session. This one is called Such a Common Bird, and it's one of the first songs that I ever wrote on accordion. And it's stuck with me through the years. It seems like it's become more and more relevant. I'm a lone wolf, a beauty and a beast, both hunter and hunted, soft tongue and sharp teeth. I'm torn from my travels, yet raw from this road. As I drink from storm puddles And the stories I'm told Help me figure this out Help me figure you in You're a shadow to me That I echo when I sing Help me figure this out Help me figure you in To this simple little melody I have seen angels They were sleeping in gutters They were standing in bank lines They were jumping from towers They were calling like seagulls but nobody heard such a beautiful message from such a common bird. We want freedom for ourselves, but we can't give it to each other. We want peace between nations, yet we battle with our lovers. We're blinded by billboards and trying to get ahead. Choking on ambition and the words left unsaid. All the words left unsaid. We've a simple little melody. I'm a lone wolf, 
A beauty and a beast, both hunter and hunted. Soft tongue and sharp teeth. I'm toned from my travels, yet raw from this road. As a drink from storm puddles, and the stories I'm told. Help me figure this. Help me figure you. You're a shadow to me that I echo when I sing. Help me figure this. Help me figure you. In. You are listening to the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. We are here on Wednesday night, so long as you're here. This and all of our previous podcasts are archived at PillowSong.com. Please visit our website and help us keep programming like this free and available. Your donation there will be supporting independent musicians in the process. I have Wendy with us right now, and I'm dying to find out how she's been doing. Hi, Wendy. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> that was really cute. I don't know if the audience heard you ask about being quiet or not, but it almost made me laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I it's... just have to step out of line. <laughs> no, no, it's really funny because we're still managing, learning to manage the controls. But Renee's doing an excellent job. Last week, we had our two-year-old screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> so... Uh, I think we're pretty much on track tonight. Um, I don't know if you... It sounds amazing. It, I really just love your storytelling and the way that you're weaving everything together. Oh. Obviously, I'm a fan. <laughs> Thanks, likewise. Um, I don't know if you heard the beginning, but I read your New Year's resolution post from your news page at the top of this podcast. Did you hear that? I got ha- I got in halfway through. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you said, may this be the year when we realize the interconnectedness of all things, where we see past the crazy and into the true, where we treasure the tiny things. It's almost like you were prepping us for the level of crazy that this year has been, at least how it's portrayed all over the, social, the socials. Um, so you want to tell us, where are you right now, and how would you respond to those sentiments now within this unpredictable context? Ooh, well, um, physically, right now, I'm based on a little mountaintop in Spain, so um, being in lockdown here for a couple of months has been extremely easy for me because I am surrounded by nature and I pretty much spend 85% of my time as a recluse anyway. (laughs) So um, a lockdown in that sense has not been much for me. Um, But of course, I'm feeling for people that are not as uh, well situated as I am. Um, In terms of the great slow down um i think well as long as you're not frontline staff they haven't had a slowdown of course but um i I feel that it's a time where hopefully something something good can come out of something terrible Mm -hmm. Uh, i think it's been such a long time of of humanity living out of balance just seemingly just always this obsession with economic growth above all else and just going forward striving more 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 you know that it just it's almost deafening like it's almost like you have to shut your senses off sometimes and uh that's 
in the shutting off of those senses that's that's pulling us away from our from our our better traits as humans <laughs> you know <laughs> it's sort of like what Reto said earlier like just don't look away you know keep your eyes open and sometimes it's it's hard to do when there's so much going on all the time are you finding a good balance of keeping yourself informed but not too informed yeah, I actually set a, a, almost a time limit. Like it's like I can listen through once a day for a half hour or so, mm-hmm. and then that's it. Yeah, just enough to keep um, relatively informed. Right. Well, that sounds like a very, very healthy environment where you are, um, and I could hear some of that in the in the recordings that you made for us. They were very heartwarming, and I'm excited to share those with with the audience here shortly. Um, I'm sorry that the quality may not be um, a studio quality, but yes, I'm on a learning curve myself. I only had an iRig to plug into my laptop, and um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, well, we wouldn't be archiving. One wonder. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't really be documenting the pandemic if you gave us perfect recordings. I think part of the beauty of this, when we maybe, you know, maybe we're listening to this podcast 10 years from now and, and just kind of remembering what it was like. And I think that's all part of it. Um, and same on our end, we're, we're making these recordings in the smallest room in our house because the two kids are, you know, they, they pretty much run the household and <laughs> um, to, fi- to find bow room for the cello between desks is quite a quite an interesting um, obstacle for me <laughs> but uh, but yeah it's been I, I just really love uh, your music I loved putting that together and um, I was looking into your album your 2018 album Hunger Made You Brave and about it you wrote Through various twists and myths, we explore the nature of evil, how certain truths are echoed through the ages, how a soul's story is told through numerous faces, and how help can come from the strangest places. So maybe we need to explore this more than ever right now. Can you share with us tonight some examples of truths that you find echoed through the ages and where you feel help comes from when the soul is in distress? Mm. Um, truths echoed through the ages, things like a small change can create big change. Um, yeah. great beauty and joy can come from great pain. Um, power tends to corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. I think we see a lot of that. Mm. <laughs> um, people that, uh, feel threatened are often mean yeah Um, people hate often because they're afraid um you can't judge a book by its cover (laughs) there's always hope (laughs) that's a few of them Uh um yeah and what i'm what i reach for what gives me strength uh my number one go-to seems to be nature um, I would love to say that I have the ability to just meditate and, and get centered. But for me, I I'm, I'm, tend to be very restless. So I need to walk and I need to be uh, surrounded by nature. And that just sort of calms me down. Yeah. Um, animals as well. I just love the, the wildness and the authenticity of them. Not a lot of masks on those babies <laughs> right right <laughs> animals are like they're like young children i guess you know they're just raw and real um, yeah for reading, better or for worse good I'm writing just kidding. yes yes <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> but again that's down to that great beauty and joy can come from great <laughs> that's true um, uh yeah uh reading and writing poetry the, the work of other artists yeah Things that help me to kind of get perspective, see a bigger picture or a deeper picture. Yeah, that's what I tend to go to. Well, those are some great examples, both of the truths. Uh, Some of those are screaming loud right now that you mentioned, and um, (laughs) also of ways that uh, you find help. That's um, very, uh, very helpful, Wendy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope it does help. 
Yeah, I hope so too. And I know at least, at very least, your songs are helping a great deal as we are enjoying them. Thanks so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sarah, for that beautiful cover of In Boca El Lupo. You guys are amazing. <laughs> and thank you for the podcast and for bringing two beautiful children into the world <laughs> and just adding so much to the musical community. So I love Pillow Song and I love you guys. Aww. Thank you. Likewise, Wendy. Thank you so much. Can't wait to play more thank of your you. songs for our audience. Thanks again. Okay. Bye-bye. Ciao. You are listening to the Pillow Song Podcast. You can support Wendy McNeil at wendymcneil.com. On her website is a link called Support My Work. There you'll find a PayPal button, but you can also buy her a coffee. Go check it out. I'm going to drop this into the chat. Here is One Color More, a song recorded and performed by Wendy McNeil, especially for tonight, for you, our listeners. This next one is called One Color More. It's about how sometimes going through something that's terrible or challenging can actually make life more beautiful. When you come out the other side, you see things in a whole new light. One Color More. You were with me when my soul cried more With your sweet promises all smoke and mirrors Get me hanging on cause I, I, I believed it So I put my faith in things forsaken These battled beauties crawling onto dusty shores Forsaken these battle 
beauty's crawling on to dusty shores. This next one is called Ask Me No Questions. It stars a shape-shifting coyote. Ever since I was a child, I've always sort of seen people as different animals. <laughs> so the song is actually about a politician, but I've always seen him as a bit of a coyote. <laughs> What did I see? Fresh blood on some feathers and an old coyote Smiling and growling, look straight in my eyes Said, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies Oh, where did you come from? How long will you stay? Like a curious cat, I kept firing away He had a great story that much I could tell He said, I am from heaven and I am from hell Decades and decades I've hunted and roamed But I go incognito, no shape of my own Sometimes I am human and rather well known Sometimes I'm the whisper on your nights alone behind me I could feel his heartbeat I turned round to face him but he took to the sky and a dozen old blackbirds started to cry they said ask him no questions he'll tell you no lies they said ask him no questions he'll tell you no lies You are listening to the Pillow Song Podcast, an evening with Wendy McNeil and Reto Burrell. This and all of our previous podcasts are archived at PillowSong.com. Please visit our website and help us to keep programming like this free and available to you. Your donation there will be supporting out-of-work musicians in the process. And we would like to thank Wendy and Reta again for making these recordings for this podcast. And a big thank you to Benito and everybody at Pastorazzi. Zusammenarbeit mit euch ist einfach toll und macht Spass. Und auch ein grosses Dankeschön an Julia, die zu unseren Kindern geschaut hat heute Abend, sodass sie hier oben im Kinderzimmer auch schön den Schlaf werden, wenn wir hier da unseren Podcast machen. Next Wednesday, it's the Pillow Song Open Mic. We welcome guests from near and far to share new music with you. 
I look forward to seeing you, same place, same time. We are your hosts, Rane Burrell and Sarah Bowman of Famous October. See you again next Wednesday. Thanks again and good night.